Hey y'all, welcome back. It has been a while. I think going on a month now, but there's been a lot happening with the project. There are a few things that I'm really excited to show and to talk about. And then we're also going to talk about what is the future of the plugin. So jumping right into it, we are in a new main.rs. So this is just an example where I can show y'all the bare bones infrastructure you need to get the plugin set up. Though a caveat, we'll talk about it a little bit later. It's not quite going to be released yet. I know uh, some of y'all have been wanting me to get it out for y'all, but it's just not quite ready yet. And there's, there's a few things I'll talk about down the road. But all that being said, this is how you're going to be able to utilize it. So all you'll have to do is start with a prelude here and then give a granite component, which is anything is just a struct where you want to edit the data or query for it or whatever, but that granite component is just a macro. And then in your main, you're just going to register the editor components, which is the granite component macro. And then all you need to do is add a plugin and that is the bevy granite, bevy granite. So I've been re-architecting the plugin and there's a lot of changes that are happening under the hood, completely re-architecting, as I said, I'm changing how all of my files are organized, how all the plugins work. Uh, I basically had no sense of design philosophy when it came to architecting the files in this large editor now. And so I'm having to go back and, and rework that. And I've been reworking multiple systems as well when I'm doing this. And it's just, it's kind of been a huge overhaul and this is gonna continue likely for the next couple of weeks as well. So. I'm going to wait to release the pre-release until I've re-architected it because likely things are just going to keep changing and it's in such a fluid state right now where, you know, the rubber is hitting the road, but there's just so much that needs to change before I release it. I made a lot of bad design decisions that I'm coming to regret now and I just need to fix them before I release them. So just hold on for a little bit longer and I will release it. But with all this being said, here is this main RS that you will be able to use in the future and then the cargo.toml just I'm having a hard coded path here but this will be the granite or or the github or the crates package here and then we can just go ahead and launch it now clear with this and this is a fresh plugin like I, or a fresh project like I said you don't even need the scenes.run file to exist yet but what you'll get is this pop up here and you can go ahead and full screen it there and you'll see some stuff in your logs here that hey, the system cannot find the path specified. It does not exist because we didn't create it and that's totally okay. Uh, you might notice a few changes here and there and we're gonna go ahead and get into them. But before we begin, I'm going to go to interface and actually increase our font scale here so y'all can see it a little bit easier. And then I'm just going to rearrange this to how I enjoy my layouts to be okay so i don't exactly remember what i have <laughs> done in the last three weeks in terms of all the nitty-gritty of uh, the functions and the ui changes and all that so i'm just going to kind of go over a little bit of the things that i think i've changed so i have created a tab interface for my settings these were starting to bloat a little bit and it was kind of getting hard to parse through things so i think this is an improvement but still could use a little bit of work. And whenever you enable or disable, you have your entire chunk turned off. So it's just a little bit easier to parse through. And that's kind of, that's really it that we're gonna look at right now for the settings panel. And then up here in our top bar, I've gone ahead and added a few more events that you can call via the keyboard or through selecting them. And we'll go ahead and click through some of them when the time comes. But that's pretty much it on the UI. Um, actually, I take that back. There are a few buttons that I added here to just change your log levels more easily than having to go through and select everything. So I added a preset for info and debug. And yeah, that, that's just a, a little bit more helpful than all because info will get rid of debug and then debug is the inverse, etc. Okay, so we have started this new project, right? This is complete bare bones. There's nothing in the scene here. There's not even a camera. And that's gonna lead us right into one of the next things. So I've added a type for cameras. So we can add in a camera 3D. And then I'm trying to move around, but there's no uh, there's no way for me to move. 
because I haven't tagged this as my main camera. So that leads naturally into the next update. If we hit components here, we now have a new drop down menu that is much more digestible. We can search for a component or we can drop down into a section here. So Bevy Granite Core, that contains the main camera. So if I select that, then it is added to the scene and we can actually move around and rotate as we would expect. So that is a main tag, which you'll be able to use. It is a core component. Another thing that you might notice is on the class properties here, where it says type camera, we now have the ability to turn off the camera on and off and then volumetric fog. So this is a wrapper for the volumetric fog settings that exist in Bevy, but it wasn't reflectable by default. So I figured I'd just create a wrapper for it and make it easily editable by y'all. So you can just drop down that volumetric fog and change all of your settings. Now to do this, you must have a directional light or to actually see any changes. You must have a directional light with volumetric fog turned on. Let's go ahead and add in a directional light and then we will enable volumetric fog. And now on our 3D camera, <laughs> I don't know why this happens, but sometimes it does happen. So let's just, uh, let's just ignore that. Now we can turn on volumetric fog and you can easily access all of the settings and this is all persisted. So if we save this file now, actually we can, we can add in a new tab and go look at the scene. You can see we've got our camera 3D data with all of, all of our volumetric fog saved as well as our component. So jumping back into here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and then Let's see, we'll go ahead and use this top menu. Like I said, we've got a new, a few new controls up here. Let's add in an entity. So we'll add in an empty. And then this actually is a good demonstration of another thing that I added, icons. So this was a big issue where if you had an empty or something that didn't have mesh data, you couldn't actually select them in the viewport. So this was a huge change to allow that to happen. So now you can select hey, that looks kind of like a sun. And then you actually get the sun selected. Same thing here with the empty. You can select it and you notice the color changes as well. We have the ability to change that via our settings here. So debug class icons, you can make the icons larger, smaller, distance scaling, scaling. So that's how far camera is away from it. It'll move with it. Personally, I don't like that on. So I'm going to turn that off. You can also change the icon color, which I like to leave it red. And then this is an interesting uh, debug option that I've added. I, I felt it to be quite helpful. Oh, well, that's a that's an odd bug there. I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to look into that later. But OK, so we've got two entities or two yeah empty entities with icons. When I select them, things start getting a little messy visually. So you have a few options over here. We can turn off show active icons. So like if you select the sun there, then the sun icon goes away. It just kind of cleans it up a little bit if you're trying to maneuver around in the space and there's a lot of clutter visually. So you can turn that off and on. And then let's say we have a selection here. You can actually turn off your selected icons. So with both of those options disabled, you don't see any icon in your selection but you can create some variation with that, of course. So that was actually a, a big change and very helpful. So uh, you can actually click things in the scene and that works for point lights as well. So we've got a point light icon, an empty icon and a sun icon. And that is very strange when I'm deleting objects, I'm getting, I'm getting some weird data there. I'm going to have to look into that, but we also have a camera icon. So, we're getting weird double here because it is active by default, but if we turn that off, now you can see we have a camera icon and it has a debug gizmo showing it's forward. So that is that, that's pretty helpful. And we can of course save this and serialize and everything will be fine. And let's go ahead and demonstrate the next thing here, which is the parent system. So you can select it via the top bar or you can hit shift P 
And what it'll do is pop up these options here. So set as parent will set the active object as the parent for everything else. So now when we select, see it's already getting a little cluttered. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off, uh, turn that off for active. Now I have a child selected and you can see we have a debug line printed indicating that there is a parent. And we can actually just turn off the debug type gizmos. That just gets a little, gets a little messy. So there is that as an option. And then one thing that we can do is hitting shift P, we can remove the parent. So now I am not controlling the child anymore. And then likewise, if we create a parent, we can select the parent and then clear the child. Now that, oh, I didn't have clear with inverse. That's a good note. I need to fix that. So let me write that down. Clear child with transform. Okay, so that will need to be fixed. But the next thing is going to be the reflection system. So I mentioned it briefly in the last video, but I was really struggling with rewriting my reflection system. There is a lot of cases and edge, edge cases that I just wasn't handling and it was starting to bloat into a lot of unnecessary code where I was having all these intermediary wrappers and trying to serialize in special types of, um, like I created my own types of string and int and all of these that I could reflect. And it was just, it was really bad. And I should have learned earlier on in the process that I shouldn't have done that way, but you don't know what you don't know. And I made the decision to revert all those changes, get rid of all of my reflection code. And I am now using Bevy Inspector eGUI, I believe is the name of the plugin. And that just simplifies things drastically. So for one, now when I have a component on an editor, there is a function within the inspector add on that allows you to what is it a UI from value or something like that, that allows you to actually edit them yourself. So I can, I can change this and it will, uh, and it will actually update the entities reflection component directly. So I don't have to have all these wrappers and whatnot. And that being said, there is kind of a bug with the message or with the string display in the grid. And I'm trying to track that down, but that's a whole other thing. But with that being said, this allows for much more complex components that I don't have to manually create wrappers for, uh, for those specific types, I mean. So this by, by default, Bevy Inspector supports like vectors, option vectors, and all sorts of nested uh, complex classes that I just wasn't handling. And this like got rid of basically 2000 lines of code into like 40 lines of code. And it was just, I should have done it earlier. I didn't need to reinvent the wheel. There was already a method to do it. And this was a huge lesson learned where it just wasn't worth it. And in this case, just use somebody else's plugin that worked. So that's what I did. And I'm very happy that I went that route because I, I don't even have to think about it now. It did change the way the scene Ron looks and I can show you all that, but it's not too much of a change. So now if we go back to the scene Ron, the components are stored like this and it, uh, it is actually a lot shorter than the way I was storing it before because everything was static and it was known. So I had this TOML format just, or I had the component formatted just like this other TOML here. And so you had a lot of uh, unnecessary information there. And this just, it cleans it up. I think this is actually like JSON format in Tommel, <laughs> but it uh, it's a lot shorter and it's a lot cleaner. And yeah, I just, like I said, I just don't have to worry about it. Bevy Inspector eGUI just handles all that for me. And that is, yeah, now wrapped in Bevy Granite. So you don't have to worry about it. That was a huge change. And I'm very, very happy that I've got that one in there. And let me go ahead and demonstrate another change over inside my testing project. I just have a little bit more going on in here, a few more testing components. So I'm back in my other crate and I have a system that is just updating my main camera to kind of simulate what a player controller would do or just something like that. And one of the things that I noticed was I was syncing the cameras the wrong way. 
And now we have an option to actually toggle the camera control of your editor here. So right now, the UI camera, which I have hidden in the tree here because there's no reason for anything to happen to it. Um, but now you can toggle who is owning the camera. So I hit F2 to toggle the camera control. And now my main camera in the main file has ownership instead of the UI editor camera. And then when I hit F2 again, it jumps back to the previous position. So here, the main camera has control. And then here, the UI camera has control. And let me show you what that, uh, that looks like here in code. That is main. And then I just have a apply camera movement system. Again, this is just at a top level testing crate. And all I'm doing is uh, I've got a timer set up and I'm just moving the timer or I'm moving the camera forward every, oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess half a second here, repeating. And so this is just simulating movement, but by doing it this way, it allows me to, to toggle and then you can you know, just change ownership. Like I said, I'm repeating myself at this point, but yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. I boiled it all down. I was talking pretty fast here, hoping to get it all out in a, in a relatively short video. But yeah, I'm, I'm re-architecting the plugin. I'm hoping to get it released soon, but there's just so much left to be done uh, as I'm cleaning up the code. If I actually show you what the, what the code is looking like now, so it might be a little hard to see with the scale of um, my windows here, but now there's one singular plugin, Bevy Granite, and then inside of it, I have crates. And then crates contains all of my sub modules where some of these are optional. The only one you actually need is core and core handles all of the, the serialization and kind of the, the bits and bobs that, you know, the editor or gizmos or something else needs. So you can actually completely disable the editor while maintaining the gizmo functionality or the logging functionality. Things are a lot more abstract now in terms of dependencies. So it's a lot easier to manage, but by doing that, I've had to <laughs> rework, like I had mentioned, my entire architecture of the project where previously I just had basically everything inside of my lib. And if I open this up now, it's much, much cleaner. So the Granite Editor in this case, it has sub plugins, like the input, the interface, the viewport plugin, and all of these are um, what I understand is a domain. So it's something that I'm learning for the architecture. It's domain driven design. So I'm trying to integrate that as I understand it to just better encapsulate my project and to create better modularity to enable or disable doing testing and really just being able to scale this project. Because I've got a lot of plans for this. There's a, a, a bright future with it. But because of some poor decisions in the past, as I had mentioned earlier, I just need to go back and refactor a lot of this code. So that's been a lot of the stuff that I've been working on and it will probably be for the next little bit. So don't expect a video anytime soon. Maybe give it another couple of weeks like this one, but please feel free to leave comments, suggestions, feedback, anything like that. I would be happy to hear y'all out and yeah, thank you all for watching.